Good evening, everyone. If I could ask you to uh, take your seats, please. I need to learn how to whistle. Just <laughs> saying. Let's all, let's all pray. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Dave Hunt, and I will be your host for a very short part of the evening before I pass you along to Maggie Casella, who you will get to know intimately, I'm sure, this evening, uh, some of you in more ways than others. Um, Trip has, uh, has, has left the building and uh, is in New York uh, filming some commercials. So uh, I think you'll... Uh, you'll You'll, you'll understand this substitution um, and, uh, and, uh, and appreciate it. Not that we don't love Trip because we... I we don't love Trip. He's in New York. He got a better job. <laughs> but I'm not bitter. Is there a table for one here anywhere? <laughs> um, without sponsors, without everyone coming together uh, to, uh, to celebrate uh, all of the great work we've done all year, um, it's, it's kind of wasted. Um, so this is a really good good opportunity to, to bring um, everyone from your team, uh, everyone from your partnerships to uh, to really look at what a great year we've had. Uh, for those who spent the last couple of days with us at the retreat, it's uh, it's been pretty incredible, amazing uh, content and speakers and collaboration, lots of great networking and, and new relationships and deeper relationships forming, which is uh, what Payments Exchange is all about. Um, Please make note of the sponsors. Please do introduce yourself. If, uh, if you run into them at the bar, uh, perhaps not in the washroom, but anywhere else, uh, shake their hand, thank them for uh, helping this uh, for, for making this evening possible. Um, of course, part of the, the celebrations, part of what we have to do is, is about judging. And uh, we're very meticulous and thoughtful. Everything is done online. There's three judges per submission. Judges don't know winners. Nobody actually has insight to winners until uh, the three scores are then aggregated from those judges across the categories. Um, so it's, uh, it's the Academy Awards for the payments industry. We don't announce. Uh, we're not having a luncheon. This is about dressing up and really about celebrating. So uh, congratulations for, for an amazing year. I'd also like to thank, obviously, our great team who um, bugs you via email, who phones you, who uh, knocks on your door, who uh, reminds you why this is a great thing to do. Um, so folks like uh, LA, where are you? Back in the, at the, wow, she, she does all that work and we put her at the back of the room. How about that, huh? Um, and David Clark, wherever you are, give a wave. And uh, Carling, uh, Carling Hunt, no relation. I actually just found out I had a daughter. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. But anyway, um, uh, Tanner, her sister. <laughs> Michael McKelvey, who has been our. Uh, I, I think he was the geek in school that pushed that that thing around with the television on it. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mike McKelvey, thank you. And of, of course, Rob Weber, our uh, VP General Manager, who's in the center of the room somewhere. He's, the, he's a part of our team with the really pretty hair. And he makes sure everything works. Uh, that's true. <laughs> And there's, there's one other person who I think deserves a lot of recognition, and most of you know this person, uh, Stephen Clark. <laughs> now, I'm going to save all the swearing to, to Maggie. <laughs> um, but Stephen was... Uh, his first job was with us, and uh, he sadly left our acquaintance, um, but not our hearts, on uh, on Friday of last week. He's been very instrumental in, in everything that we've accomplished with Payments Exchange um, at the Hunt Group and giftcard.com. Uh, gift um, 
he's personable, he's going to be brilliant at whatever he does, and uh, and we wanted to wish him well in his new endeavors, and uh, his new employer, I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Uh, so congratulations, Stephen. If you would please come up, we have a, uh, we'd like to present you with a, a token of our appreciation. And so we can eat on time and have fresh veggies. I'm going to pass you to our Master of Ceremonies, if you'd be kind enough to welcome Maggie Casella. Come on, people. Oh my God, this is horrible. <laughs> okay, first of all, is my mic on? That was horrible, okay? That was like the most tepid, ridiculously, I know I'm not Trip. I'm in New York, whatever his last name is, Crosby. His real name is David, what is his real name? It's something Crosby, like the son of David Crosby. <laughs> It is David. It is David Crosby. His real name is David Crosby, so actually he's in rehab. Anyway, so um, no, Tripp got a job and you got Canadian talent. So I would like to have a round of applause for that. You got Canadian famous people. Do you even know what Canadian famous is? No, you don't. I'll tell you what Canadian famous is because I'm Canadian famous. Canadian famous is when you're in Canadian Tire, and this is true, this is a true story, and someone comes up to you and says, you work at the Canadian Tire by my house, don't you? <laughs> and you say, yes, yes I do. <laughs> and they say, can you tell me where the irons are? And you say, this isn't my store. Not a word of a lie, okay? That is Canadian famous, all right? And that's why you got me. And you know nothing about me. You're like, Canadian, this isn't me. I am Italian, I will tell you that. I'm raised in a Jewish neighborhood, which means I'm a big hot mess, people. I am just, my inner posture is a boiled shrimp, which is ironic, because it's not kosher. Anyway, we won't go there, okay? Um, I, what do I want to, I, I'll tell you this, although I'm deeply closeted about this. This is hard for me to say. Um, I'm originally from the States. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. I, listen, I'll tell Canadians I'm queer before I'll tell them I'm from the United States. I will. Because like, you tell a Canadian you're queer, they're like, where are you from? I'm like, did you know I'm gay? They're like, I don't care. Where are you from? And I'm queer. I'm queer. And did you, where are you from? I'm a lesbian. I'm a big lesbian. And they're like, I don't care. Where did you grow up? And you're like, they, by then they're just gone, right? Because you've just disgusted them. The reason is because if you tell a Canadian you're from the States, they're like, what about George Bush? Then explain the Electoral College and drones. And I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I've lived here 20 years. Leave me alone. So I um, am deeply closeted about that, but now you know. Um, what else? I own a club. I own a nightclub. I am a, I am a, 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 yes, I do. I own the Flying Beaver Pub Array on Parliament Street. Perhaps some of you have heard of it. You're all laughing like that's the Flying Beaver. Look at you. You're all filthy. You're filthy. Your little gift cards, your little dirty gift cards. Your filthy little gift cards. Flying Beaver is an airplane. What is wrong with you? It's the De Havilland Beaver. It's like the safest plane. It lands on the lakes. It's a pontoon plane. All right, it's a bush plane. There is a joke there. Um, anyway, uh, that was tough because uh, it's actually a, it's like a dinner theater. It's like a pub on one side and a cabaret room on the other because I couldn't find anywhere to perform where people weren't talking or on their Blackberries, you ADD riddled gift card. I see you all when Dave was talking. I'm like, you stop that. You put that down. And you can't do that to me because I'm the poster child for ADD, which by the way is a misnomer. What the hell does that mean, attention deficit disorder? I did not have a deficit of attention. That is not my problem. I have a surplus of attention. That is my problem. Call it what it is. Attention surplus disorder. Why are you saying I have a... That's what people are always mad at me. They're like, you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. I'm paying attention. Just fucking not paying attention to you. Anyway, I digress. So uh, my club is on Parliament Street. I opened it after the uh, entertainment industry crashed in this city. Um, and it's a pub array. Okay, pub and what's like cabaret? Simple, pub array. I made up the word, I trademarked it. It's not a puberet. What is wrong with people, okay? And it is not a puberet. What is, I was Sandy Rinaldi, uh, Rinaldo introduced me on CTV News one night and she's like, and Maggie Casella, she owns the Flying Beaver. It's a pub and a cabaret. It's the Flying Beaver puberet. I'm like, oh, Sandy, you see? That's why Lisa LaFlam got the big job, right? Because it, <laughs> you, you put it to, oh, I know, I love her. They're all lovely, but Lisa LaFlam is just, she's just smoking. Anyway, um, yeah, and I don't even know what a pavarette is. What is that? Something you wear in your hair when you go to the pavarette? Ladies with long hair, you know, you're like, oh, honey, where's my pavarette? So my beard doesn't get my... It didn't make any sense at all. Anyway, it's a lovely little club. Um, I used to be neighbors with Dave Hunt. 
So that you know that about me. And if you want to know anything about Dave Hunt, see me later. Um, Cause uh, yeah, the windows weren't, the blinds weren't always, you know, in the beach or the houses are right on top of each other. Um, and what else? I'm a current events comic usually, not tonight, because really, who wants to hear about politics? I mean, nobody really does. I mean, you do, but we're, I've had it up to here. Uh, and seriously, uh, Rob, I was doing Rob Ford jokes three years ago in the States, and then I had to watch all the late night people. I'm so bitter. All right, so anyway, um, there were two things in the news, though, today that I actually wanted to share with you. So before I get to my other stuff, I'm going to share this one. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, there is a, there's a police are advising people now to remove the um, the decals, the family stick. Okay, can, I just want to say this about that. I freaking hate these. Can I swear? Can I? Okay, I fucking hate these things, all right? I have always hated these things. First of all, I don't give a shit about the composition of your family. I don't care if there's a mother and a father and a baby and it is and that and a dog and a cat. I don't care, okay? I don't care. I don't care. Secondly, why are you advertising the makeup of your house? This is a true story. It was behind a woman in the beach about a month ago. It was a woman, a little girl, and a cat. Oh, is it just me? I mean, you might as well say, follow us home. There's no one there to protect us, okay? <laughs> so I did follow her home. When she went in the house, I scraped it off the door. I was like, my God, woman. And then, and then, I mean, it says a lot about people. This really does say a lot about people because then, um, I don't even know which one to push. Uh, this is my own computer and I wanted to operate my own computer and, and there we go. I saw this one. Can you see this? This is, this is in Toronto, okay? There are three women, moms, two of them have X's through them. This makes me nervous on, for a whole bunch of reasons, okay? Well, first of all, I used to be a divorce lawyer, okay? So I, I actually was a lawyer, and now I'm a human being. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, so this I just thought, you know, first I thought, oh, well, he's been divorced twice. <laughs> Run away, ladies, I'm just saying. Um, or he's a serial killer. I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, that was in the news today. Also in the news today, um, I don't know if you read this, Chick-fil-A is coming to Canada. Anybody, Chick-fil-A? Are you clapping? They are the most homophobic, right-wing, not crazy, lunatic, Christian fringe, I, creepy Christians I call them because they're not the good Christians, they're the creepy ones. They're like, woo, they're, they're crazy, okay? They are the most, right, they actually, their mandate is to like hate homos, okay? They are so bad that people actually, it was just, and they admitted it. We're like, no, we hate everybody, okay? And what is, what was the, uh, that's number one. Number two, I'm sorry, but I have the, this is my, just me. Maybe it's from my days as a lawyer. My feeling is if you can't spell it, you shouldn't be able to do it, okay? <laughs> what is a fill A? What is a fill A? For the longest time, I thought this was a gas station. I swear, I used to drive by in Florida. I'm like, what is Chick-fil-A? Because they're from the South, we don't spell fillet like that. <laughs> that's how the French spell it, and they're communists. Oh my God, anyway. Um, so guess where their first uh, store is going? Alberta, of course it is. <laughs> So I thought maybe you guys, they're coming, maybe we could, you could get some gift card, get the gift card industry into the Chick-fil-A market and uh, just don't give one to your hairdresser, I'm just saying. Um, but what was interesting about this was that during the whole thing last year where they were all accused of all this horrible stuff and donations to these horrible groups, they got a groundswell of support from their supporters. Just everybody who was Chick-fil-A, they're like, we're going to go to Chick-fil-A more. We're going to eat more Chick-fil-A. We're just going to eat more and more Chick-fil-A. More and more Chick-fil-A. We're gonna eat it. We're gonna eat it. We're gonna eat it. We're gonna support Chick-fil-A. Eat, eat, eat Chick-fil-A. 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 They had their biggest year ever last year. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Why? Think about it. Go ahead, you right-wing nut, homophobic idiots. Eat all that bread and chicken on bread with bread and cheese. Because if the heart attack doesn't get you, the diabetes will. See you later. Bye, Chick-fil-A. Okay. Um, so, anyways, maybe it was just me. It was just me. See, that's why we don't do current events, comedy, and these things. Um, all right. So, anyway. Anyway, uh, Canadian Famous, I just want to prove it to you. I used to have my own talk show here in Canada called Because I Said So. That is me with my giant big hair. That is my hair. That hair, let me tell you something about that hair. It was exponential, people. You know, you have the same hair. If it gets humid, if it gets humid, they come and give you your own postal code. Is it not true? It's true, right? So I, had, I, I, I actually had long blonde hair. Dave will tell you, for almost 20 years. I just cut it, and now people treat me differently. It's very strange. Um, I experimented with a bunch of colors. Uh, recently, I went orange. Um, <laughs> 
which is weird, right? Because I, I, this is when I knew this was not a color that worked for me. I actually had the inverse of Ronald McDonald's haircut there. Um, and yeah, my agent was like, no. Uh, but besides that, is the, Ronald McDonald not the creepiest? Is it? No, okay. Well, apparently he was creepy, because uh, I don't know, this is also in the news this week. They have rebranded Ronald McDonald. Have you seen? Yes. Okay, here he is. Ew, okay? I'm, that is creepier to me than I, I, the 80s cargo pants, the helmet hair, I don't even know what that is. I mean, even Florence Henderson didn't have that hair. And the zippers on the, that, why does he need zippers? His, what is he carrying, Ronald McDonald? I don't, I don't know. If he's smart, there's a bomb in there, he'll go wander in a field and blow himself up. Anyway, I have my own talk show. There I am in all of my long-haired glory and my high-waisted pants with famous people. There's Leslie Jordan, Gloria Rubin, perhaps you know her, um, and all of these people who, uh, half of whom are dead, but it was time. Um, Phyllis Diller, Tony Bennett, <laughs> Eartha Kitt sang to me on one knee. This is Canadian famous. Joan Rivers, Marcia, uh, Andrea Martin, I love her so much, um, and, and B. Arthur was probably my the highlight of, I know, I have the best B. Arthur story, but it is filthy, and I will tell you during dinner, okay? <laughs> it is filthy. She had the filthiest, filthiest, she said a word I have never even heard before <laughs> in my life, okay? So, but I'll tell you that, it's totally inappropriate. Um, I interviewed, like, a lot of famous people, just probably about everyone you met, except, you know, I, I, not, Tom, not, not uh, Tom Cruise, who was in town this week. My date, Rich, actually gave up his Tom Cruise premiere ticket to be with me tonight. Thank you, Rich. That was so sweet of you. Whatever. Anyway, um, Johnny Depp was my favorite, though, because I have to tell you, I, I, you meet all these famous people, and it's nothing, right? After a while, it's nothing. Who gives a shit, right? Who cares? It's like you're doing your job, they're doing their job. Johnny Depp, I lost my shit. Johnny Depp actually walked by me right before the interview, and he looked at me, and I had a George Bush t-shirt on. That's how long ago it was, and he went, I like your t-shirt, darling. And I went, oh my God, Johnny! I did that, okay? I did that, and I thought to myself, who is that squealing little girl? Who is that squealing little girl? Like, and I was like, oh shit, it's me. Oh my God, it's me, and I freaked people. I freaked, okay? Because, I mean, I, I've been a lesbian since I popped out of the birth canal. I'm not doing that joke, because it's too filthy, but anyway, trust me, I, I'm like 100% gay. I was like, what's happening? What's happening, right? I'm like, oh my God, Johnny! And I was like, holy shit! And then I looked at him, I looked very closely at him. Johnny Depp, is, if he's an inch, he's five two. Okay, he weighs 120 pounds. All right, he's just a wisp of a wisp of a man. He has a little bit of hair on his chin. And I thought, oh, thank God, he could be a lesbian, an Italian lesbian, of course. <laughs> so I felt better about me. Um, I am happy to be here. I mean, it was like a last minute sort of, you know, trip got a great job. Uh, and so Dave, I, I'm very grateful that you asked me to do this because this is fun, right? I'm, I don't have to leave town. I don't have to go anywhere. Dave's comment though about people like to get dressed up cracked me up. He's like, and we're doing this and people come and they sit and who doesn't like to get dressed up? Women, Dave, women don't like to get dressed up. Okay, and you wanna know why, Dave? You wanna know why? Because of Spanx. Because of Spanx. I am wearing Spanx. Anyone else? Anyone else here wearing Spanx and willing to admit it? Spanx. Spanx. Look at these. Oh my God, what happened? I broke it because of Spanx. I, I turned it off. Oh, look at them. Look at the Spanx. Look at them. They're a nightmare. They are a yeast infection waiting to happen, people. Enjoy your bread. I'm sorry. Well, come on. And skinny jeans, please. They just they might as well sell you the monostat with the skinny jeans. I don't even, they do now. You're like, what's this pill in the pocket? They're like, it's cheaper this way. Just take it. I, 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 it but these are, what could be worse than this? What could be more, you don't even have to be a feminist to find that offensive. Spanx for pregnant women. Are you kidding me? I actually thought about having a baby once just so I could get fat. And I'm not kidding, because I'm Italian. And my entire family is big. Okay, they are. I'm not making that up. So it's not like I'm paranoid. I know what I I look like 100 pounds more than this because I look just like my brother who's 300 pounds. So I'm like, I'm just going to get pregnant so I can just get fat. And now I find out you can't get fat if you're pregnant. I'm so glad I didn't do that. Not just because I didn't want a baby, but because apparently you're not allowed to. They're just, it's horrible what they do to women. Okay, it's horrible them, Dave, what they do to us. Okay, and this was, I think, the, one of the biggest affronts ever. Did anyone see this? The C string. Anybody? This is a bathing suit they tried out a few years ago for women. It's a bathing suit. I'm going to walk down the beach with that between, are you serious? It comes in all different colors. The red one, I, I don't even, uh, come on. And the, the, the black one, to me, the, the black one looks like she needs a trim. I don't even, 
People, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> what am I supposed, oh, just, oh, I don't care. What am I supposed to do with this? Look at this thing. I don't even know what I'm supposed to. Captain, Captain, the Klingons are coming to the. Let's get physical, physical. I don't know. Here, I'm meeting you. You come out here. With... Uh, you can't even imagine, but it does fit. It does. I wouldn't in a million. This, I bought them all because I knew they were going to go out of business. So I bought them all. But it's, you know, I don't want to be one of those women that complains like it's all, it's just us because they're coming for you, men. They're coming for you. They are, because they sold us everything, right, ladies? They sold us everything. They've guilted us. They've sold us. So now they're coming for you, all right? I mean, before a couple of years ago, who heard of manscaping, OK? <laughs> this does not look fun to me. All right? I mean, we all know when it grows back, it itches, all right? So now you guys have to, you, this is, and the whole thing, and they sell special razors for you now so you can shave your boobies and make your whatever happy and I <laughs> down there I I wouldn't even, are, can you imagine can you I would not I can't I and then there's a nerdscaping this guy I don't know how I found him <laughs> I just want to throw the ball at the back of his head I do I just want to find him and he's so happy with that and I'm <laughs> and then there's this guy who really just I know, I know. See, when you're looking for these things and you find these other things, that's, uh, that's real. That's not photoshopped. That's just nasty. That's what happens when you shave too much, right? I mean, we know that. If you shave a lot, then it grows back thicker, apparently. Um, and now they have Spanx for men. Yes, they do. There you go. Sp this guy's not even fat. He's not fat. He doesn't need Spanx, okay? They have Spanx for men. I don't even... And now, so now you guys are all like, ooh, and I know I have gay male friends who are manorexic. You know what? Fuck off. That was our disease, you know? <laughs> it really makes me mad when you steal our disease. Oh, I forgot to tell you, but I did skip a part, okay? I will say this about that. There's one thing you don't have to worry about. I mean, well, you do, because I saw like a 70-something-year-old guy on the beach once, and um, he was naked, and he was with his wife. Um, and it was a naked beach, but his wife was wearing polyester from head to toe. I don't know why. Blue, Robin's egg blue with a little floppy hat on. And she was reading a book. And he was naked. And I thought, more power to them. Good for them. Until he stood up. Holy gravitational pull, Batman. I have never, his balls were like click clacks. Does anybody remember click clacks? Those things he used to, it was so nasty. It was like, nur, nur, nur. so you need to, I mean, honestly, I, 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 I know this for a fact because I am Italian and I mean this I will show you this this is a uh, this is a miracle this is a phys physics miracle okay a lot of you are like what's going on here what because uh, I actually I have Italian girl syndrome if you don't know what that is that's where your breasts don't get bigger they get longer okay so uh, that's they tell the age of an Italian girl take off her bra it's like tree rings like 35 45 55 60. but since I <laughs> since I got boobs I was like 85 so I've mean, never been good they're always like windshield wipers okay th these are gaffer taped in people anyone else gaffer taped in nobody with spanks and gaffer tape just me okay all right then boy I came out as American I mean, I, sh I told you my boobs are gaffer. Do you want to see? Because they're really gaffer tape. This guy's like, I do not want to see your droopy boobs. <laughs> like nothing could. He's like, I don't even ever want to see. An I'm, I'm gay now. That's what he just, that's what happened to him. <laughs> um, yeah, so you guys actually should wear your tidy whities But uh, I'm going to leave you with this because I really think that it's horrible to do to men what they've done to women. But I'm slightly amused by it. <laughs> and I will say, probably my favorite recent thing is feminine hygiene products for men. I know you're saying, how can it possibly be feminine hygiene products for men? I give you this, and I leave you with this, because they've got you guys. They've got you. The one thing you thought you actually never, ever, 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 thank you, woman in the front row, ever, 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 like how could they possibly sell feminine, hy feminine hygiene products for men? Well, they can, and they have, and they are called Leak Guard. Oh, wait, well, that's me. Now, here we go. All right, let's get this training going. Okay, guys, pay attention. First, we need to talk about the tools of the trade. Okay, maybe you're not using anything yet, and you need a plan. Or maybe you're coming up with your own fixes, but that's not protecting you the right way. Ladies have their own stuff. 
See this? This is for girls. This, this is, is not for you. This is for guys. You. These are depend guards and shields. This is your gear. This is made for men. You don't see any pink, do you? No. No girly package? No. They're shaped to fit men so they protect you better. If you just keep scrolling down, I'll show you how to use this stuff. Okay. That is not a joke, okay? And trust me, don't keep scrolling down. <laughs> Thank you very much. I leave you with Mampers. We'll talk to you later on. Dave, let's serve dinner, everybody. Michelle, enjoy your dinner. <laughs>